With Pulsar systems, remarkable water clarity, color, and sparkle are as easy to achieve as they are to enjoy. Pulsar systems, full install. Today, you will learn how to install the Pulsar system for your pool. These instructions will guide you through a typical installation and will work for any of our three sizes, the Pulsar 45, the Pulsar 140, and the Pulsar 500. The manuals can be found on our website, pulsarsystems.net. Before we begin, ensure your pool recirculation line is isolated from the pool pump so there is no water flowing through the piping where the booster pump loop will be connected. Now, let's go over some factors to consider during your site assessment. A 1.5 inch loop is going to be added to the main pool recirculation line. The loop will have an inline pump to drive a venturi. The inlet line will get water from the discharge of the pump. The discharge valve of the feeder will be hooked up to the venturi. It's critical to determine the effluent pressure of the system. Measure it immediately after backwashing when it will be at its highest level. You will typically need less than 20 psi of effluent pressure to allow for proper operation of the venturi. Minimization of back pressure on the venturi outlet is crucial for optimal performance. Avoid the use of elbows after the venturi if possible and never install an elbow within three feet of the venturi outlet. The venturi should be close to the feeder to reduce distance and elevation between the venturi suction and feeder discharge. Position the control panel close to the feeder. The control panel requires 115 volts 15 amp power, which also powers the booster pump. Do not locate your control panel in direct sunlight or wherever the temperature can exceed 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Mount the control panel. Install the flow switch in the pool return line near the inlet to the booster pump loop. Then connect the orange flow switch cable from the control panel to the flow switch. This interlocks the booster pump with the pool return water flow to protect the booster pump internals from a no-flow condition. Position the feeder in an area convenient for daily operation. Make sure the cables are not in contact with water or creating a tripping hazard. If an ORP controller output is used with the feeder, connect the ORP controller to the control panel. Next, connect the gray cable from the J-Box on the back of the feeder to the control panel. Finally, have your licensed electrician connect the booster pump to the control panel using the appropriate gauge wire. The pump is shipped for 230 volt single phase installation, so it must be reconfigured for 115 volt operation. To do this, remove the back cover on the pump motor and move the switch from 230 volts to 115 volts. Once the booster pump wiring is completed, plug in the power cable. Now install the booster pump and venturi loop. Either drill and tap a 1.5 inch NPT national pipe thread hole downstream of the pool filter or use saddle clamps or tees as an alternative. The hole should be drilled on the side or bottom of the pipe if the pipe is horizontal. Cut the 12 inch by 1.5 inch PVC nipple in half. Thread the nipple into the 1.5 inch tapped hole or saddle clamp. Glue the 2 inch by 1.5 inch reducer bushing into the inlet of the pump. Take the 1.5 inch ball valve and glue it onto the nipple that was screwed into the pool piping. This makes the connection from the pool recirculation system to the pump inlet. Drill and tap a second 1.5 inch NPT hole downstream of the first. This hole accommodates the discharge side of the pump. If automated controllers are used in the system, the drilled and tapped hole must be placed downstream of the ORP and pH probes. This is to avoid problems that may occur with the controller operation. Thread the second nipple into the tapped hole or saddle clamp. Take another 1.5 inch ball valve and glue it onto the second nipple. Try to reduce or eliminate the use of elbows on the outlet side of the venturi to the pool recirculation piping. Using 1.5 inch PVC pipe, connect the inlet side of the pump to the 1.5 inch ball valve installed in step number 5. Piping the discharge side of the pump will involve installing a venturi and reducing tee. Place and glue the 1.5 inch by half inch reducing tee on the 1.5 inch cut nipple on the discharge side of the pump. This reducing tee will have a half inch male tubing fitting screwed into it that will provide the inlet water to the feeder. Take the venturi and wrap tape around the threaded ends. Screw the unions on each end of the venturi and tighten. The unions help provide easy removal of the venturi for cleaning. 
Thread the 3 quarter inch by half inch reducing coupling onto the Venturi suction, then connect the half inch ball valve to the coupling. Orient the Venturi so that the flow is in the proper direction. Using the unions, connect the inlet side of the Venturi to the reducing tee coming off the pump discharge and the outlet side of the Venturi to the 1.5 inch ball valve connected to the pool recirculation line. Use additional 1.5 inch PVC piping as necessary to complete the connection. Install the female Parker fitting on the ball valve at the Venturi suction. The booster pump Venturi loop is now complete. Assemble the feeder using pages 16 through 20 of the installation manual for guidance. Connect the inlet manifold and discharge valve assembly to the booster pump loop using the half-inch tubing provided with the feeder. Position the feeder so that the outlet tubing length from the discharge valve assembly to the Venturi suction is short. Measure the tubing length required based on feeder location and desired tubing routing. Cut the tubing to size for both the feeder inlet and outlet. Connect the inlet manifold to the tubing connector on the T above the booster pump. Connect the tubing from the Venturi to the discharge valve of the feeder. The last step is to prime the booster pump. Once all connections are made between the feeder and booster pump loop and the PVC glue has hardened, let water flow through the pool recirculation piping from the pool pump. Open the 1.5 inch ball valves located at the booster pump inlet and the Venturi outlet. To prevent seal failure, crack open the union fitting on the booster pump discharge until water runs out freely. This will indicate that the booster pump has water in the volute and is safe to start the pump. Start and run the pump for 3 to 4 minutes, then open the half inch ball valves and allow water to flow into the feeder, checking for leaks. You have now completed a full Pulsar system install. Refer to the operating manual for operating instructions.